It's so good to be here with you. And who says mezzos don't lead charmed lives? <laughs> Invited as the guest of the New York Philharmonic to celebrate Maestro Mazel's last New Year's Eve as music oh. director, here's my friend, Susan Graham. Oh, Happy New Year! Happy New Year to you! We're Thank together! You. We're spending it together! I know! This is fun! It's been <laughs> a while since we've had a New Year's Eve together. Yeah, we had one a couple years ago. I'd have to think ago. about it. We did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know it's exciting <laughs> to sing all these gorgeous aries, but I, it's a challenge as well. What's the difference between singing them in concert as opposed to on the operatic stage? Well, you know, when you're when you're singing these these arias in context in an opera, you've got costumes and sets and lighting and colleagues and choruses and props and you know horses. It's been the case of Carmen particularly. You've got all these things going on on stage, <laughs> and here you walk out and it's like singing them in your living room. You know, it's it's a chance to to sort of come out and sort of have a party, more festive atmosphere, especially tonight. tonight. But doing these arias sort of out of context means that you have to really kind of paint a whole character from the beginning of that particular aria to the end of that aria because mm -hmm. that's, that's all the audience gets of it. So you have to tell sort of the story and, and let, let everybody know who this person is. Uh, within that small frame. So it, in some ways it's harder, but in some ways, you know, you know it's going to be over like that. So Well, when you get to look like you look tonight, oh my God, oh, the jewelry, the kind. dress, it's just perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So, and then it's, it's not exactly what I would wear to sing Sesto, right, which was right. the De Pan Questo, the first yeah. aria I sang. That's a pants roll. So <laughs> normally I feel a little overdressed for Sesto. He's not exactly the diamond wearing type. Sesto gets to be pretty tonight. <laughs> Sesto gets so. to be a girl tonight. <laughs> so let's look forward. You've got two arias from Carmen, you're not in the stage production. No dancing, no castanets, or, 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 right? No, or horses, or dogs. So no costume, exactly. So you're saying that the music tells the story. I mean, did, did, it's, does it have a kind of a different flavor to it as well? Well, I've never sung Carmen on stage. You know, it's one of those mezzo roles that, that I've been asked to sing, but I just haven't felt like it's quite right for me. But who can resist singing these, these beautiful arias if you get a chance to? You oh, know? God. And everybody says that Carmen is one of those kind of iconic characters that, you know, everybody has a little Carmen in them. Oh. And then, yeah, so, you know, this is a chance to sort of... We want to hear about that. Let Carmen <laughs> come out for an, a little a little visit. <laughs> but you know, this is different from your regular repertoire. Can you describe the way in which it's different and why you're not doing it? Why you've decided not to do it? Well, you've got the habanera and the segadilla. We get to hear the two set pieces from this. You know, I I don't know. I, I mean, I've been so busy doing you know exploring my Mozart and my Strauss, and of course I do lots of French opera. I do lots of Massenet and barely. But Carmen is is sort of a she's a slightly different kind of character. She's she's very smoky and and typically my voice sort of sits a little bit higher than some of those ah. those lower scenes that Carmen has to do. For instance, the card scene is is sits that's a little low, bit that's low. True. So it's more a tessitura. It's then. more a tessitura yeah. question. I mean, and you know. When I was younger, I was sort of Susie Sunshine, you know, and I did all the Carabinos and the Dorbellas and those right. kinds of parts, and, and I sort of questioned whether I really had the smoky temperament for Carmen, but I think the older I get, it's Ooh, getting... I think you've, yeah, I, I, I've seen you we'll in action. See. I don't think it would be a problem okay, at all. Okay, you can stop all. right there. You can stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> What's the allure of Carmen? Because, you know, Carmen is to mezzo-sopranos what Tosca is to sopranos, and I'm not singing Tosca either. I would love to but sing why? Tosca. Oh, oh, yeah, that's all right. That's, that's, you know, that's my, my hmm. at home in the privacy of my own living room <laughs> role. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> So why is Carmen such a kind of a one of those special things that you keep getting asked for? Because it, it, it you know, everybody it does Carmen. Every opera company in the world does Carmen. It's a surefire yeah. ticket sales yeah. opera, and in these times, you know, ticket sales are very important and for all of us. And but Carmen is also the music is is so recognizable. It gets in your soul. It, I mean, people walk out of the place humming all the tunes. Know the tunes. You know, exactly. it's like bohem. Yeah. It's something that that just touches you immediately it's very visceral so i remember the first time i saw it do you remember your first carmen experience yeah i was, was i it? think i was i was 18 years old and it was a texas opera theater coming through lubbock texas i was in college there oh. and, and it was a touring company and i sort of was mesmerized i thought oh, really i thought that looks really fun but it looks really scary because she had to dance and play the castanets who have you seen do it at the met oh gosh waltraub meyer denise graves wow. um yeah I saw Maria Ewing do it a long time ago. Oh my you know, gosh, I've yeah. seen, yeah. But you know, the, I think the most exciting thing to do operatic repertoire with the New York Philharmonic is the quality of the orchestral playing can bring even a war horse like Carmen to life in a way. I mean, describe what it's like to sing it with them. Well, that's, that's the thing, you know, uh, talking about doing all these other arias out of context. It's, you know, you're, you're, you're up there with the orchestra. 
They're, you're surrounded by them. You're, you know, you're, you're engulfed in this wave of sound that's sort of coming through you, whereas right. usually, you know, yeah. we're on stage and the orchestra is, is in the pit. Hardly hear them. Yeah, you have to sort of listen, but here it yeah. just sort of, it lifts you up on wings of strings and, right, and, right. and woodwinds and percussion and everything, and it's right there. It's very, it just goes right through your body, and so it's sort of, it's sort of... Especially when it's perfect like this. Oh, and absolutely they're incredible. Perfect length. You know that the, the Mozart it was so smooth and beautiful, and then the the sort of transparency of the Velia and the Carmen is very oh, gutsy and raw and I, fun. It's and really exciting. But then you go for Mozart. The other thing that's amazing about you is your unbelievable, uh, you know, the, the, the versatility. I mean, you go for Mozart, then Velia, and now French. And I consider you to be also a specialist in French repertoire, which is oh, another well. reason why it'll be interesting. I'm very excited to hear you sing well, these Well, you should talk. You do all the same things, you know, Mozart and, a lot and of different things. German and French. I mean, you know, we all have to be very versatile. But, but this is another one of those kinds of occasions where you get to... You know, you just get to pull out all your favorite tunes. And, yeah. you know, it's so much fun to sort of jump from one thing to the other and just have a little taste of this. It's like a tasting menu. It's, it's like, <laughs> you know, a little bit of dessert and a little bit of main course and then some champagne at the end, hopefully. Sounds like New Year's Eve. Hey, it could be New Year's Eve. I love that idea. <laughs> We've worked together so many times. I mean, our first show was Rusalka. We oh were chosen gosh. from winning the Met competition. Remember that in That's Seattle. Right. And she was singing the title role, and I sang the often cut part of the Kitchen Boy. Oh, as I recall. <laughs> yeah, but you made the opera. It was oh yeah, yeah. I think the Kitchen you. Boy was pivotal <laughs> in that third you scene. You know, but it was comic relief, and I didn't even sing for a whole act. So, <laughs> and it was in Seattle. Wasn't oh, it? it was. It was. It was. Yeah. It, yeah. Just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Just you know. And we've done so many Strauss, Rosen oh. all over, and Mozart together. I know. And the thing that I just I've been love, your boyfriend so often. See, yeah, yeah. One of the it's really best ones, I have to it. say. You know, never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but we've we've had such a good time, and I I think you know one of the things that's so special about what we do is that we travel the world and we meet our friends again. And New Year's Eve brings us home. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here with you tonight. Well, how often are we sort of in New York? At the same time, not in the first often. Place. and also on the holidays, and we can sort of do something fun like this. Exactly. I mean, all the t all the different cities in the world that we've, where we've sung together. You know. And when we see each other again, it's like it was five minutes ago. Well, and yeah. our lifestyle requires that of us. We're really traveling all the time. Well, know? that's you know that's that's what keeps us sane. I think are these mm -hmm. connections, obviously that we yes. make with our with our friends and. It's colleagues. like a family. I mean, it's like an extended it totally family. Is. I mean, because you and I started like practically the same day. Yes, exactly. You know, and we've come up through all these. We all had these the big hair. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we, just we won the Met competition together. together. We just found that you showed me that oh, photograph that recently. We, we both had big hair. Big it hair. was in the 80s, the very late 80s. Yes, very yes, late yes, 80s. Yes. And we both had on <laughs> blue dresses and large hair. Same dress, exactly, almost the same dress. Yeah. So, yeah. But you know, lots of times you know this, that, that particularly when we were singing together in Paris doing Rosen Cavalier, right. I would be walking down the street after a show and these young fans would chase me saying, Madame Fleming, Madame Fleming. <laughs> they would all, they, for some reason, they, they always they confuse us. I yes. Know. I don't know kind why. Kind of blonde, American, you know, I'd like to think very attractive. Smooth haired yes. American girls. Yes, I personable. Know. I've learned from you. I've learned, I've been watching you all these years. Oh, I've picked up, picked up the sparkle on good days. <laughs> you're very <Yeah>. sparkling. <laughs> Anyway, you're going to have a fabulous second half, and we are so fortunate to be here. None Aww. more than me. I love your well, singing. Well, this is such fun. I mean, it's your such biggest a fan. festive atmosphere. Back at you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Renee Fleming, our host for tonight's Live from Lincoln Center, in conversation with her good friend, mezzo-soprano Susan Graham, who is our guest soloist tonight.